this. C'est l'heure. Ok, let's go. So, welcome everybody. Thank you for attending this last session of the last day. So, thanks. Um, we will talk about um, a field report, how we manage at OVH um, to live migrate our instances. So, first, who are we? So, my name is Arnaud Morin. I work at OVH. Um, I'm, I'm involved in deploying, managing the OpenStack infrastructure for, for OVH. Hello, and I'm Julien Cosmao. I'm working in the same team as Arno. So I'm involved in the deployment of uh, public cloud infrastructure and the automation. So what are we doing? So basically at first we were selling dedicated server, bare metal servers since 1999. And uh, then we tried to evolve and we provided some web hosting in order to uh, let our client deploy web, uh, web pages, basically. Um, we also do some dedicated cloud, which is a product based on VMware vSphere. So, and of course. So we are doing uh, public cloud. Uh, we are providing uh, object storage, uh, we are providing instance and volume with, we are providing volume with uh, self backends. And of course, uh, it's provided an open stack. So before starting uh, the talk, just a little bit of context so everybody is aware of what we're doing. So we are managing uh, 25 OpenStack regions based on open, OpenStack either OpenStack Juno or OpenStack Newton. We will talk a little bit later about how we upgraded from Juno to Newton. And we, are, we have more than 250K instances deployed in all, all this region worldwide. And um, yeah. So when do we need a live migration? So as a public cloud provider, um, we don't know what our, our customer um, uh, managing their infrastructure. And of course, we can't reboot uh, the host with all their instance uh, running. So when we need to, to do some hardware maintenance or we need to reinstall some host. We need live migration to move all of this VM on other compute nodes. Uh, for example, at the beginning of the year with the Spectre and Meltdown CV, uh, we had to update uh, kernel everywhere, microcon, and of course, uh, live migrate uh, instances on an uh, upgraded host. Another big project uh, for this year was to upgrade uh, our infrastructure from Juno to Newton. Uh, Juno uh, was running on Trusty and Newton on uh, Xenial. So to keep consistency between infrastructure, uh, etc., we needed to, to live migrate also uh, all the QMU process running on Trusty to Xenial host. We'll explain that uh, at the end of the presentation. And of course, uh, uh, with more live migration, uh, it will trigger some bugs, and we will uh, try to explain the bug uh, we encounter and how we fix it. So let's talk about the Nova live migration mechanism that we, we have. So first, uh, what you must know is um, we used to have all the OpenStack regions on Ubuntu Trusty running OpenStack Juno. And we were using some QMU and libvirt version which were uh, regular uh, software uh, version on this OpenStack Juno uh, release. So we needed uh, a, a very well working live migration but as you may know it's not, it's not the case on a pure OpenStack, Vanilla, uh, Juno, uh, so. And also we, we have multiple instance profiles. 
And this is why our uh, migration is painful because we have instances which, which can have a local disk based on SSD disk and we also provide to our clients instances which can boot on Ceph disk directly. So we can also add some signed-off volume, attach signed-off volume to instances. We also have some uh, config drive possibility, uh, GPU, FPGA, and of course a lot of different CPU uh, architecture. So with all of this stuff, it makes our live migration very complex and we had a lot of headaches uh, managing this live migration base. So to describe a little bit uh, our workflow, uh, when we find a bug uh, on our production, but live migration, uh, first we try to reproduce that bug uh, in our own dev uh, environment. Um, and then we can, well, we try to figure out what is the, the root cause. Um, if it's on QMU or if it's an uh, open stack or it's in issue. Uh, because we are on Juno, uh, a lot of um, a lot of issues have already been, are already been fixed uh, upstream. So we check if there is already existing commit uh, upstream, and we try to, to cherry, cherry pick in our uh, OpenStack environment. Um, if it's not fixed upstream, uh, if it's impacting the production. Uh, we, we try to find a, a code a workaround. And we have a, a team uh, who is working uh, on our OpenStack code. And they try to, 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 to work uh, with uh, guys upstream to, to, fix, uh, to fix the issue. So for the, the first bug uh, we encounter, so uh, on on a VM, uh, we are using a lot of uh, memory on a loaded instance. Uh, migration uh, migration never finished and takes really long uh, to to converge to the destination host. So to to be able to finish uh, the migration, uh, we needed to to pause the instance so with uh, virg suspend. Um, and to reproduce the case, uh, we try to, to run StressNG uh, in the VM. So here there is an example. So on source host and destination host, uh, with uh, virg command, virg dem job info, you can have some some metrics about uh, what is happening on uh, host uh, source and destination. So here on destination. After suspend, uh, VM was suspend. The migration can finished, and you see that the data processed. It's a, it's a huge, and QMU try with a lot of iteration to converge uh, the live uh, to finish the live migration. Um, there is an option uh, in QMU. Uh, it's uh, auto convergence. So with this feature, uh, it fixed uh, a lot of issue. So um, for that, uh, it needed QEMU 2.5 uh, and a new version of Libvirt that we have not on Juno, but we had on Newton. So first, uh, the, the first thing to do was to, to upgrade uh, uh, QEMU and Libvirt and all our uh, Juno infrastructure. So what Auto Converge is doing, um, when, um, when you are trying to live migrate uh, an instances who are doing a lot of uh, memory usage, uh, even if you have a big uh, bandwidth uh, between your source and destination host, uh, even with 10 gigabytes, uh, VM can dirty memory page uh, faster than you can live migrate to destination host. So auto convergence uh, will throttle CPU step by step to uh, to help uh, live migration to finish. So here there is an example how to uh, enable it on Juno and on Newton.
Yeah, we, we had also another issue which is related to uh, the Libvirt method that is used by Nova to, to manage live migration. So on, on the Juno OpenStack uh, release, um, uh, Nova was using migrate to URI, URI2. So this function was not able to live migrate an instance with, which have a local disk and uh, an attached uh, signer volume. So because of that, we needed to shut down the instances, detach the volume, migrate the instance, not live migrate because the instance was shut off, and start again. So the solution to fix that was to use the next version of this uh, function. And of course, to do that, we needed also to upgrade uh, QMU and libvirt again. One other issue we had was about config drive. Config drive is an option that you can pass to, to Nova boot command or OpenStack server create. And when you use that, it will just create on the compute host itself a new disk.config file, which is used by the instance to get um, uh, instance metadata. Instead of doing a HTTP call, uh, it will use this, uh, this file directly. But in libvirt, if this file is um, in a specific format, uh, then it will be considered as read-only and libvirt is not able to migrate this file. So the solution is kind of dirty, but it works, is to use SCP command before doing the live migration to copy this file on the destination host. So libvirt sees a file, it just says, okay, the file is here, I don't have to live migrate this file. And this is just uh, a sample line of code that we cherry picked back back to, to Juno. It's available on on, on uh, Nova Nova code. So we didn't fix uh, all of our issue. Um, recently uh, we tried to use a CPU pinning uh, mostly for L1 TF uh, CV. So we made some tests uh, uh, with CPU pinning on uh, in our infrastructure. So um, it's working great uh, uh, with the scheduling and, and in QMU, in Nova Compute, but uh, live migration is not yet implemented. Uh, I think there is people uh, <coughs> working on that uh, upstream. And uh, another issue we had, um, was with uh, the format of the, uh, our disk. On some flavor types, uh, we now use a raw disk instead of QCO2. And when we want to migrate some QCO2 VM to uh, compute nodes configured in raw, uh, live migration was failing. Um, so we make a, a little patch to, to allow that. And I think maybe um, there is something to, we can work on to, um, to, to uh, allow live migration from QCO2 to, to raw compute node uh, and make the conversion on the fly. And about uh, libvirt uh, migration feature, uh, there is another option we didn't test because we don't have the, the QMU version uh, needed. Uh, so it's post copy. It, it's, um, it's a really interesting feature uh, to, to help, live, enfin, to, to help uh, live migration with a really loaded VM to, to help to, to converge. So it's an option that can replace uh, the auto converge. But um, it's not impacting the guest uh, uh, like uh, autoconverge do with uh, CPU throttle. And there is also a compression of uh, uh, rampage. So it's a feature we, we need to, to test in the future. So now that we show you uh, all, all kind of uh, live migration issues that we, we had and that we fixed some, somehow. 
Um, let's talk about the tooling we built around uh, around that in order to automate live migration because nobody wants to use live migration by Nova, live migrate, blah, blah. So what we first did is we developed a tool um, inside of VH that we called Run CLI. And Run CLI is amazing because you can use that uh, to, for example, call some Mistral uh, workflows and you can just drain a host. By draining, I mean you can just empty that host. So you are using Run CLI to tell, uh, to tell OpenStack to uh, just empty that host because you need, we need to do some upgrades, do some stuff because the host is um, not healthy or stuff like that. Um, Around this tool, we built a lot of other features. So we can, for example, upgrade instead of only one host, we can upgrade multiple hosts in a bunch, uh, in a bulk way. Uh, we can just manage aggregates. We can uh, move hosts from a region to another. Um, we can do a lot of uh, stuff. And we also recently deployed Mistral in order to uh, automate some actions using workflow. So I don't know if you are familiar with the uh, Mistral workflows, but here is an example. Um, we can see on, on, on this um, uh, web interface, which is called Cloudflow, that um, we have, um, we built um, a Mistral workflow called Live Migrate Instance. And this workflow is able to live migrate an instance in an automated way by pinging instance before to check if it pings, trying first a live migration without block storage, without block migration. If it fails, trying again. If it fails again, trying with block migration. And do a lot of uh, stuff that an operator can do manually, but it just do it. Uh, without uh, manual action by an operator. So let's dig into, into this workflow. So first, workflows on Mistral are, are very simple. It's first you have some inputs, which can be considered as viable. Then you have some tasks, which can, for example, execute an action uh, on a remote server through SSH, through anything you can imagine. And uh, you can also call some other workflows. So you can just chain workflows together. And at the end, you have some outputs that you can use in another tool, such as RunCLI, for example. Um, I have an example workflow, which is called Live Migrate. It takes an, uh, as an input only a region and an instance ID, VM, here. Then this workflow is, um, in this workflow, we try to ping the instance before doing the live migration. If the instance pings, then we will set a flag called pingable to true, if not false, of course. And on complete, whatever the result, we will continue by doing the live migrate uh, action. And the live migrate action is what? It's a workflow which is trying to um, use Nova server live migrate function, which is baseline on, in, in, in Mistral. And it will try first without block migration. As you can see here, it's false. It will try multiple times. If it fails, it will execute another live migration uh, action, which is this time live block migrate. It is basically the same one, but instead of block migration false, we set it to true now. So this way we can, we don't have to care about is this virtual machine migratable with or without block migrate. We just need to migrate it. So now we talk uh, from our uh, workflow. So um, workflow is executing from um, an external host. Um, we will check uh, what's happening and what we added directly on compute node. So um, we developed a lot of probes to, for our alerting system. Um, uh, and we deployed it uh, on our compute node. So this way we can detect if, um, if something goes wrong uh, for the instances deployed uh, on compute. 
and we can uh, detect a post live migration issue. For example, if some, everything has been cleaned uh, on source nodes and if everything is present on destination. And our alerting uh, this probe are reporting to our Shinken uh, infrastructure. Um, so for example, uh, here we have an instance routine. So basically it's just checking the four IP that are present in the compute nodes. And we see here that uh, there is one that does not res respond because there is some missing root um, in the principal namespace. So, so we need uh, an interruption to, to fix that. Uh, um, we will check, uh, I will describe uh, uh, some probes we, uh, we have uh, on our compute nodes uh, and what we are checking. Uh, it's mostly um, network, um, network stuff. So for neutron side, um, at OVH we are using uh, BGP uh, directly on our compute nodes uh, and routing public IP um, in our instances. So it's um, uh, homemade, uh, it's a um, uh, neutron agent uh, coded uh, at OVH. Um, so first we are checking if there is a missing or a missing BGP announce after the live migration or if some, everything has been cleaned on source. We also check open flow rules. We are using them for, um, for our private network. Um, we are checking if uh, open v switch bridge and every namespace are present or everything has been cleaned on source. And um, we are also checking if, um, if instances are responding to herping. Um, for example, a customer has put some security rules. Uh, the, the Mistral workflow is not able to ping the VM and not able to, to say that uh, everything is okay. So we can detect an issue if, for example, everything was okay with IRPing, and if after a live migration, uh, it triggers uh, an alert. On Nova sign, uh, on QMU and Nova sign, there is uh, less to check on our side. So um, there is a mechanism in Nova to uh, auto clean uh, orphan disk. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we were using live migration um, with no patch. Uh, we had some issue with um, uh, failed live migration and uh, disk was still existing on source. So we disabled the, the feature to, to uh, auto clean the, um, <coughs> the, disk, uh, the disk automatically by, by Nova Computer. So, um, we just had to re-enable it because uh, it just works. So. When we do live migration, we also collect metrics and data on the compute itself in order to uh, send that in a, in a time series backend. And then we can do some graphs and some uh, monitoring in order to see uh, how long it takes, uh, how many times it's failing or, su or, or, or succeed. Um, we are collecting that thanks to two open source projects that we provide on GitHub, which, is, which are Nodrig and Beamium. And basically, you can just put um, a, a custom uh, Python script or any kind of uh, script. So we are doing some, for example, verse dump job info uh, just after the live migration. We just collect all those statistics and send them to, to the Warp 10 time series backends. And after that, we can just do some graphs. So here we have some, some graph example. It's uh, mostly just to have some numbers. So um, uh, we migrate in approximately uh, 100 and 80k instances since the, um, the beginning of uh, the, the end of January. 
So it was just after the, um, the, the spectre and meltdown issue. So that's why we started to, to, um, to make some graph and have some statistics on, on what is, is happening on our infrastructure. And we have a graph of a uh, number of line migration per day. It was um, at the beginning of the year. Either, so. And here we have uh, another graph about um, the average uh, elapsed time of uh, live migration in some region. So uh, we can see that the average is uh, about uh, three or four minutes. Um, it can, it's long because uh, we are mostly using um, uh, instance with local disk. We have uh, a lot of this, so we, we, uh, we also have the data to move from compute node to another one, so that's why. So, now that we, we, we saw that we have a good live migration system and some tools to automate uh, uh, these workflows, uh, let's talk a little bit about our upgrade from Juno to Newton. So, upgrading is sometimes easy, sometimes not. So, the first easy part was the computes, because Thanks to our work done, the work done on live migration, we upgraded QMU, Levert, and now we have the same uh, version, software version of QMU and Levert on both Trusty and Xenial. So we are able to just uh, upgrade the compute by just using some IPT upgrade um, command, basically. It's a little bit more complicated because we are using Puppet to do that, but it's um, quite, uh, quite easy to upgrade the computes. The second easy part is a um, stateless control plane because uh, when you want to upgrade, uh, for example, Nova API, you just have to upgrade the Python kind of Nova, right? So basically it's the same story as for compute, but it's even easier because this time we were able to reinstall the, the server itself in new in in a new uh, Ubuntu uh, uh, Xenial version and uh, install OpenStack Newton uh, uh, there. But the hard part uh, about this upgrade is definitely the database because if you already upgraded, you know that uh, uh, upgrading OpenStack is uh, basically upgrading the database. So our solution to do that was to use uh, a so-called fast-forward upgrade, and we, we did that by uh, building some Docker containers with uh, Python code inside, and inside the containers we just uh, executed basically uh, Nova Manage or Neutron Manage, Neutron DB Manage to perform the Alambic uh, migration. Um, of course, also, if you want to upgrade, you need a very good documentation because uh, the guy who will uh, upgrade, he, he needs to 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 knows what uh, what he will do, what he what he is currently doing. So he needs a very good documentation with uh, all kind of cases he can encounter during the upgrade. Uh, you also need a, a working backup, of course, but everybody should have a backup of the database. Um, and you need a way to roll back, so it should be part of your documentation, but. Uh, it's uh, not, uh, it's, okay, we need a backup and a rollback procedure. Um, as a conclusion, uh, we, we had a very old um, OpenStack Frankenstein Juno code, which we, uh, in, in which we backported a lot of uh, uh, Newton or even uh, new releases, uh, new live migration commits. Um, and thanks to, to this working live migration on Juno, we were able to automate the live migration and finally we were able to migrate from Juno to, to Newton in an in a easy way. So this is the end of uh, our talk. Thank you for attending the session. Um, maybe you have some question? Or not?
so, so this is kind of um, loosely related to what you've been talking about, but you mentioned a couple of times L1TF and um, CPU pinning and stuff like that, and I was wondering what actually is your strategy with dealing with this, because it's terrible, I guess, for cloud providers. It's a good question, and um, we don't have the solution yet, so um, we can dis discuss about it. I, I met a lot of people now there who ask the same question. And if you are making CPU over, over allocation, um, it's complicated. You cannot really uh, make CPU pinning. But in our case, um, there is uh, some flavor with, uh, we have some dedicated resources. And we are not doing over allocation. So in this case, um, we, we maybe have a solution with uh, CPU painting. It's not in production. It was just uh, we made some, some tests, etc. So And of course, if you have uh, over allocation on CPU, uh, disable uh, SMT, hyper threading. Or, but uh, I don't have uh, the solution. <laughs> So you said uh, so in order to enable CPU throttling, so auto conversion trust, you need to upgrade Livio and QEMU. So what impact it had on user workload then? Mm, almost no impact. Um, the biggest impact was why we, we needed to upgrade QEMU, so we needed to live migrate instances to be able to run on the new uh, QEMU, of course. So it was it was harder because this time QMU was not <laughs> able to liver was not able to live migrate. So the first live migration was hard, but after it was okay. Yeah, and we don't we don't add any any big issue by just upgrading liver and QMU. It just works. Um, about uh, CPU throttling um, from guest point of view, um, it's difficult to, to say. Yeah, I think it depends really of the workload of uh, what the customer is doing, uh, uh, what the customer is doing. And if uh, there is a really high memory usage, uh, there can be, if the migration uh, takes a long time, uh, it maybe have uh, an impact uh, on performance for sure. But um, Live, mi live migration doesn't take a uh, really long time, so I think it's still better than shutting down the guest and restart it uh, on destination. Uh, did you have uh, any VMs with PCI pass-through, and if yes, how did you handle them? We do, and we don't live migrate those. So did you see any issues with uh, local storage at block migration? Like, were there some QMU version that worked badly with them, like they fail, it failed disastrously? Because I saw, saw like everything worked in Devil fine, and I was happy then the end. Then I went to do it in production, and uh, some instances have failed, so I just stopped doing that. Using block migration? Yeah. So uh, we had some bugs about sites which were for example, some, sometimes I think we were uh, copying uh, data, for example, from uh, if you have a safe volume, stop me if I'm wrong, but if you have a safe volume uh, attached to an instance and you use block migration, then you will copy this safe volume to itself. We had a bug like that, but uh, we fixed it by cherry picking something into, into the code directly. It was uh, uh, using migrate to a uh, Yeah, it was. It was uh, the bug related. Uh, By using migrate to URI3 instead of 2, we fixed that. And basically every block migration is working now. All right. Almost. So, if but, it's, yeah. But the issue was present in Juno, but uh, in, in Newton we didn't add the issue, if I remember well. So, in, uh, with which version of uh, OpenStack uh, did you? We uh, used Newton, but these. 
course, this was a production and this was on the our oldest hardware, of course, and the longest running instances, of course, as well. So it might be something like versioning old. I'm not sure, like, because every, everything I launched myself in Devil, like, it worked perfectly. But then there were some productions instances that didn't have from local storage to another local storage, basically. Okay. So you had some cor corruption on, on, on... Yeah, I, yeah I recall, if I recall correctly. Like, the, it failed, like, it crashed, basically, the instance, so... Okay. I don't remember having such kind of issues, but um, maybe we can talk about that after with the team, if you want, because... Do you know how many, how, which percentage of the instances crashed during live migration? I guess some probably did. We had especially that with um, older kernels inside the clients. We've seen crashes sometimes. So by crashing, you mean instance is not working? The instance is freezing. The, the Linux kernel inside the instance is freezing. Um, yeah, we had such issues, but I, I have no statistics about that. So. Don't know. No. Do you have a, an idea of the performance impact of block migration? I guess people are using local disks because they need high performance, and then if you block migrate, that might kind of defeat this purpose. You mean if we block migrate, we could lose some performance? Yes, oh. during block migration, I guess. I guess people are using this for databases that are kind of disk yeah. latency sensitive, and then if you suddenly block migrate them, their database might spike. Yeah, so it's, I, yeah, it will affect uh, the instance because, of course, we are just um, migrating it, so it will affect the instance, but it's still better than just shutting down or suspend it. Are you sure? Uh, I mean, Imagine that some customer might prefer two minutes of downtime to like five minutes of erratic performance. Um. Sure. Yeah, sure, I agree. On small instances, it's uh, quite painless. <laughs> Did you have the problem that sometimes uh, instances end up running somewhere else than Nova thinks they are? Yeah, running? we had that. <laughs> and um, so that's why at the beginning we disabled uh, ripping of instances. Ah. Nova, instead of ripping, we were logging. So, and we had some um, probes on computes to check if an instance is supposed to be there or not. Yeah. And um, in, in the Juno release, we, we, we had some tools to fix that. And yeah. um, by patching live migration and now in Newton, we, we figure out that it's not needed anymore because Nova is... Uh, working in a better way, it's, it just works. So we, Julien said that we enabled back uh, ripping of instances. So we don't have any, we, we are not supposed to have any double instances now. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, did, did you have uh, the issue where uh, you issue a live migration? Uh, we have this in Okata, I think it's really rare, but you issue a live migration and then nothing happens. Um, because if we only consider the host that is it's currently running on, and you have to like clean up some weird database entry, and then yeah, and then it works. <laughs> we we do have sometimes if the first live migration is failing, then the second will also fail because uh, the, the destination host is already having some part of files, and um, ah. it's just um, it's failing. And um, we do that the third time. <laughs> we do live migrate third time and um, it's working after after that and uh, that's why on, on our Mr. workflow we do live migrate multiple times oh. to help uh, work around that and we also had an issue which was about um, Cephmon IPs uh, I don't know if you had that but if your Cephmon IPs change, then your live migration may fail because IPs are not available anymore. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. And Thanks. we we don't have any fix for that for now. So. Okay. No more questions. Thank you very much.